Hi everybody, welcome very much to Wezo Swing Buyers. Today we are going to make a tier list about the best civilization for platinum and diamond rank. Before we start, leave a like and subscribe, you know where it is. And before we start as well, just say if you did listen to Beastie saying that uh, if you are like not at the top level, if you're not conqueror, every sieve you play is dog shit and every sieve the enemy plays is uh, S tier, that's not true. Of course, he was exaggerating. I understand the point, which means that in lower ranks, the civilizations might not be a difference. It's all about the skill level. But what happens if you and your enemy are on the same skill level, right? Which that's why ranks exist. That's why uh, the ladder exists to group people in similar skill levels so you can have good games and learn with people around your skill level as well, right? So... The civilizations do matter, and in different skill levels, different civilizations are better than others. Now, keep in mind, what Beastie says is still kind of true, right? It, it is not super important to play the meta sieves, and actually that happens a lot. Now that we have more sieves, it doesn't happen as much, but I remember last um, ranked season, not last patch, last season, where we didn't have the new sieves, we didn't have the variant civilizations, right? A lot of people were just speaking Mongols, Rus, and the good old English. And that's going to be a special, not a special tier for itself, but it's going it's gonna to be a special conversation that will be for later. Also, use the links on below to find us live on Twitch. Let's get started. Right? So, real quick, we're going to start with what? Chinese, right? Now, we have to understand two things the potential value of the civilization and how good the platinum and diamond people can use that civilization, right? And when I say platinum slash diamond, I'm talking plat 3 from, or like plat 2, because like I have, I've been to diamond 2 this season, we have, I have a, a high yellow, but I'm plat 2 right now because yesterday I lost a bunch of games, right? I'm talking about those platinum 2s, right? That were already diamond 2, diamond 3, and by trying new sieves, trying uh, new strategies, came down the ranks, right? Because the, the plat 1s and plat 2s that just came out of gold, it, it is not really for you guys, okay? But can still apply, because you can know what you have ahead of you once your ELO rises, okay? So let's start right off the back here with China, which I think is a B tier, if not A tier, but I'll put it on B tier, because how hard it is to use. You have a lot of value with this civilization, especially right now, where if you make siege from your clock tower landmark, it needs your nest of bees need four springles to be taken down in one shot, which is great value, especially in early castle fights, where you and your enemy don't have a lot of units, one single volley can be decisive from your nest of bees. So, and that's exactly the time frame early castle, it's very hard in early castle to have four springles or even two springles ready to face the nest of bees. So that's great value. Then you have great economy, you have the imperial officials collecting resources all around, barbican of the sun, great landmark to perturb or deter that feudal aggression, but that's also where China suffers a little bit. Even though they have the barbican of the sun, they're still very frail in feudal, you can prey on them very easily, but some players at this rank, at plat, high plat, low diamond, medium diamond, they can, with help of supervision and good macro, make a lot of units in feudal, defend, and then snowball the game into castle age. That's why I think Chinese is very, 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 very good, right? But because it's hard to use and you have to make a lot of decisions. I also was talking about on stream about how Byzantines, they are not that bad. You just need to make a lot of decisions and switch and adapt to what the enemy is playing. And at this level, plat and diamond, and even at high level, but way more here, right? Um, most people play the game in one or two ways. That's why civilizations that are more straightforward or that already have one strategy that is proven to work are better in terms of the win rates. While China... Byzantines, even Japanese sometimes, you have so many routes that if you don't know how to choose the right route, you will lose. So that can 
de-inflate the win rate. And that's exactly the problem with China. You have a lot of ways to play. You can play aggressive, passive, a mix of both. You can be aggressive in feudal, in council. You can drag the game to imperial. Even your composition is kind of hard to decide because you can switch really quick as well with the help of your imperial officials. So it's a great civilization, great economy with the granaries, a lot of gold with the imperial academy and the imperial officials always walking around and collecting the gold, right? Good to turtle and um, good to finish the game with a mass of units. Great siege, more HP on the siege. And remember guys, if you want more siege, make a siege workshop and supervise it with the imperial official. It can catch your enemies off guard. So China, great potential, but B tier because hard to execute, hard to make choices and very, very frail on a feudal age but if you survive and you can make the right choices on castle age you can have the game on your hands and by the way talking about china let's go to zushi legacy which i think it's a i think it's better than china at platinum and diamond because you get more tempo you get more things going for yourself resources right from the um, landmark the meditation gardens right free units from Yangnan Tower and building your uh, military buildings. Z don't need to edge up twice, aka go to another dynasty to have access to the Zugunu, which actually, sometimes you don't want Zugunu, you want archers and you, you don't have, but it's very rare, right? Sometimes you want the archers, and Chinese are very good at pumping archers because of the supervision, because of their movement speed. In certain matchups, you prefer archers, but it's very, very rare, right? Then Zushi has discount on their town centers, discount on the farms, discount on the granaries. It's just a little bit better than China, but then Chinese have certain things that they do way better than Zushi. That's why I don't say that Zushi legacy is a better China, but I say that, um, for an example, John Dark is a better French, right? They offer different things, and I think Zushi is easier not just to use, but to see the target, to see the win condition, to see the end line, to see the end goal, thus easy to is execute, great economy, good units, can go for two or three TCs, even with the, with the nerf on the discount, I think it's a very solid sieve, if you don't press it early on, they'll just snowball the game with a bunch of Zugunu and uh, spears, or even horsemen, or even early palace guards, if the uh, feudal village goes too long, can I still go fast castle, right, and grab all the relics with the Shaolin monks, even though we see way less of that strategy, it's pretty much viable, right, and then late game is just, like, China just crazy, I just think it's not as frail on feudal, it, I think it has a better castle age timing because it's not so dependent on the siege, even though they have the nest of bees, not that lock tower run, but they still have the siege, they can have more imperial officials, better imperial officials, with the upgrades and whatnot, so I think it's a little bit better than China in that aspect, and I, and I think it's solid, it's more solid, easier to execute, but very, very good civilization. Then, let's talk about Ayubids. Now, I think Ayubids is a great civilization, right, but every single game that I play on Platinum and Diamond, by the way, my highest rank was Diamond 2, so take this tier list with a little grain of salt, but every single, bro, and I'm not exaggerating, every single game they do fast castle, to the on stream, I, we played the game in four lakes against an Ayubit player, even though they had a great sieve on water, right, with half price docks, instead of 150, 75, they didn't went for fishing, they went for fast castle and lost the game. So, at my level, players, or it's the player's fault that the Ubits goes to B tier, right? Because they only do the fast castle, they don't explore other options. And it's very rare when they do the fast castle into the religious units to collect relics. But when they do, it's really powerful. That's why I'm placing a Ubits at B tier, because they're a good civilization. Camel Lancers kick ass, Gulams is, are very good. The, the their religious units grabbing relics earlier on are really good as well. Their bonuses from the Golden Age are crazy good as well. Making siege on the field is so good because one of the problems with this um, siege meta right now or the, the changes is that when you lose siege, uh, for example, you need four Springles to one-shot a clock tower nest of bees, you need three 
to one shot the mangonel, right? So if you lose one or two, then they need to walk all the way from your base to whatever you're fighting, or you need to walk back to the base until you wait for them. But the Ubids can just go to over there, over the corner on that forest, or behind the keep and make siege. And at our level, at Platinum and Diamond, that's really, really good and really sets them apart. Really sets them apart. You you can be more risky because you can afford to lose one or two siege engines, come back, rebuild them and push again. Sometimes that economy is really good. It's crazy. Sometimes, right, in certain matchups with certain good macro, that economy is really good or the, uh, the speed at which they can transform economy into military. It's very good, I think that's better worded, because it's not that they have crazy eco, they just can transform that eco into units really, really well and really, really quick. I think that main composition, Gulams and Camel Lancers, is really good. They can also mass crossbows really fast, and that can be really annoying to deal with. But once again, player base only does the fast castle build into Gulam spam or Camel Lancer spam, does not explore at my level, right? Not exploring the full potential of the civilization, Let's touch about it, the Manjanik, with the ability to destroy buildings really fast, is a great choice. Especially because Rams right now are really bad. I just played the game, bro. I, I threw away four Rams in Feudal, I just got destroyed by Spears before I could kill them. So it's really a nice in-between, a nice siege engine in-between the Ram, which is just killable, super killable, and the um, Trebuchet that can be very slow to work with. So the Manjanik, then you can switch to kill units can kill buildings, really sets them apart. Actually, I, I will put them above China here, right? Because I think they are better. They are, the only reason they are not A tier is because I think they are not so consistent in terms of economy. They're kind of hard to switch, to make the switches, and uh, they're very good sieve, though. Remember, B is a good sieve, A is very good, S is crazy out of this world. And now, we're talking about the Ubits, let's talk about a Basid. Now, I will not put the Basid on D tier, right because i think they're good right i think they're good they just very hard to use and that it's very hard to get their rewards or like there is a reason why you play english there is a reason why you play hre there is a reason why you play mongols because they have these specific bonuses or specific units or specific ways to play the game right and the and the boss seed it's just like it's either hard to reach those states or when you reach those things they don't feel powerful, right? But if things go right, it's a very strong civilization. Very easy into two TCs or three TCs like Zushi's legacy. You save on villagers, so you can invest more into military. You, your military can be stronger in feudal or castle with boot camp. Your archers can be stronger. You have extra food from the berries like Ayubids and Delhi, right? You can have more production speed, more research speed, more gathering rate with all the uh, Golden Age bonuses, right? But I just feel that they lack something more of their own and they lack impact because whatever they do just feels so passive. And I've lost games against the Vasid on this current patch, on this current season, but it wasn't many of them. I didn't play against many of them as well. And every time that I win, it, it wasn't like super it was challenging because the player made it challenging not because oh it's the civilization they do this and they do that you know what i'm saying they, they really f lack something on their own that kicks you in like every civilization has like one thing oh if hre grabs the relics oh if mongo starts trading oh if delhi makes two million um gazi raiders oh if they do the and the boss it doesn't really have that thing you know what i'm saying oh the oh if they do this i'm screwed no, you be like, oh, they are bossy, we're chilling, right? But every time I lost against them, it's because they messed more units than me on Feudal, right? And besides that, besides a strong late Feudal tempo, which doesn't exist m much often because either you try Feudal Aggression, it doesn't work in your co-castle, or most people just straight go to Castle Age, it, a, a boss it really lacks power, it has a good eco, doesn't have really good... Uh, the camel archers are very good, but very expensive, right? The, the camel riders can be very, very useful, but also expensive and very matchup specific. So they really 
miss something that impacts the opponent and their playstyle. But a good sieve, you can still we can you can win with them. It will just be harder to do so. Now French, French straight up D tier. All right, French D tier. They're not good at all. Only and only if you. And this is in general, guys, because I'm imagining somebody. Oh, bro, but I, I reached Conqueror on using French. Well, that's you. you. You you do very well with French, but most people don't, right? That's the goal of the tier list, right? And uh, French for me are good if you go 2TC French, pumping villagers non-stop, early aggression, make your enemy bleed, go to castle, make keeps with buildings around, grab the... Like, you know, that's good. But French in itself is not, Right? Because these civilizations have these crazy eco bonuses, and the eco bonus from French, which is the faster villager production, I think it's not really impactful, or it needs a long time to feel impactful. And then they have cheaper eco upgrades, cheaper eco buildings, and that's it, right? So, oh, you can say they have a great unit. They have the Royal Knight, which is very expensive, right? And if you lose one or two against civilizations like English, or HRE, which have way better eco bonuses, they can really set you down. So what what makes French good, it's also what makes French bad. And you have to remember this for Platinum and Diamond, so it can be hard to take care of those knights, right? It can be hard to babysit those valuable units, but even French being a D tier, it's still a solid sieve. I think we don't have bad sieves in the game right now, but in comparison to other sieves, right, it's just like, nah, it's not there, mate, it's not there, mate, right? Next up, let's go to Rus, which is a A tier, better than Zushi. I could even put it on S tier, but I think people, and inclusive me, don't know how to use the safety, security, and the Greek eco of the Rus. And most times I find myself and other rules players being a bit too passive when we have an advantage or focusing too much in one unit or focusing too much on siege, you know? And sometimes it really feels like the pro players and people from Conqueror level, they kick ass with rules, right? They just everywhere, their eco is great, they have a lot of siege but they're raiding over here, raiding over there, you know what I'm saying? I just feel Rus is very good but people at our level are not really able to show that, right? But I've been run over by Rus players. I've run over other I've I've had I've I've had run over other players with Rus. Really bro perhaps one of the best sieves in the game is just for platinum diamond. You really need to not only know the basics but be the best at the basics at macro scouting went the early game can be a mess for platinum and diamond and low diamond players right um it can distract you it can perturb your macro right um although you have great eco bonuses you have gold from here from there gold from the hunting cabins gold from the high trade house from killing deer you didn't got enough bounty 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 right oh it doesn't matter you can just Rush castle if, that, if that's the case if you can do so and just kill a bunch of deer and now you are you have enough bounty Right knights are good going for the fast cast. That's one of the safest and fastest um, fast castle timings right by killing the boar and uh, Just go castle with it right very easy to mass archers in feudal then you have cheaper siege literally in Imperial but on um, h3 because you have a boosted um, wood collection, right? Also, your villagers are, are a little bit better at collecting food because of the bounty bonuses, right? So, very, very good sieve. Easy to mess units. Easy to defend as well with the Kremlin and the, the, the militia. Great civilization. Once again, I just think people in Platinum 2, 3 and Diamond 1 in 2 slash 3 cannot turn the 5th gear and put Rus at a higher level. Mongols! Now Mongols, A tier as well, better than Zushi, just because they're more aggressive, they, they dictate the tempo, if they, they start trading while Tower Rush you is a mess, even though I think Tower Rush should not be in the game, I never did Tower Rush, 
I think brings the level of the game a bit lower. It's not like I'm, I'm against the players that do it, I'm against the strategy itself. But it's a great sieve. Double production is really good, especially when you when you want to mass archers. It's just crazy. You can, if you lost units on the front line, you can rebuild really quickly at home. Your villagers move around really fast. You can hide landmarks to avoid being landmark sniped. I think it was three days ago. My enemy and I were base trading and I lost the game because he had the storm center. I destroyed every landmark, but the storm center was packed in the middle of five or six towers with cannon emplacements and a bunch of traders there. So I didn't even saw the the, the, the town center there, only on the replay. <laughs> it, was re it was crazy, so very versatile sieve. It really hurts from not, not having walls or keeps. Bro, but sometimes I play against players and they, they make no walls, they make no keeps. So it, it gets less hurt from that at platinum and diamond. But great sieve, you that take the tempo, you have the cash eggs, you can make mass archers mess uh, crossbows you can make a lot of units and because you're saving some resources with the double production or because you're trading you can go castle first by having more units than your enemy and then you just spam them with men at arms improved will bear which actually kind of crazy i don't know if you guys have test i don't play mongols but i don't know if you guys tested with it improved will barrel just goes crazy i think it's like plus nine carry rate um carry capacity so it could you go from nine if you go from 10 to 19 which is like almost two villagers, right? Working and walking faster with wheelbarrow and uh, deer stones, right? So it just goes ridiculous. They can spam a million outposts on the map with um, upgrades. Oh, by the way, this is not including water maps, but civilizations that are good at water maps, I will mention it. And that's the case for the Mongols because they have this very, very good thing, which is very specific. And you might think, oh, so that's not enough. But it is. Because they are already mining stone from the Ovu, quote unquote, the Ovu, right, quote unquote. So they can at any point just put an emplacement on their docks. And that's, bro, that perturbs completely the early water aggression game, right? Because even Japanese that get stone from the gold, they can just immediately or very, very soon do that. And they can, and even on two or three docks sometimes. So they can attack you near your docks, and you can't even come close to their docks, which makes it really, really good. They can tempo, send the Keshe Kortu behind your base, and it, or start trading. They, they, don't need even, they, they don't even need to invest a lot into water if they don't want to, or if they lose water, they're just trading as well. So you can do a lot of things, very good civilization. It's very, very strong. It's just not better than Rus, because it's not, it's not even closer to be as safe and as solid as Bruce, right? Next, HRE, my guys, I know there are so many people that love HRE, right? But it's D tier, it's dog water, my bro, it's dog water, it's so bad, right? I like HRE too, I tried them either early this season or late last season, and I was like, bro, I'm forced to do the same every single game. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go castle every single game. And I completely despise there and Order of Dragon mechanic of having, a, of having a cheaper Imperial Age. Bro, why? Why you have a cheaper Imperial Age? I know it's a comeback mechanic, but sometimes they are ahead. Especially Order... Okay, this works for both, right? Sometimes they are ahead and they go to Imperial earlier. Not come, that's not a comeback for me, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, you have to go castle, grab the relics, oh, but you could, you can go mine work and play feudal. Oh, yeah, so I won a game yesterday. Bro, can you do it consistently? Can you, can you go diamond 2, diamond 3 with that? Maybe not. And if you do, it's very specific, right? Like, once again, it's for everybody. It's just like dog water. They have the best at arms in the game. They can do plus 2. Plus six, plus two, plus six, so plus eight, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, against um, heavy armor targets, which are great. You can mass them really quick, they can walk faster, they have better... That's one thing I don't understand. Why are they not good in feudal? They have better villagers, with the inspiration of the prelates. They have many times in feudal, which not many people have, not many sieves have, I mean. Why are they not good? Maybe they need too much food, they need too much food to set up their military buildings. I don't know, actually, I don't know, I didn't spend time thinking about it, I don't know, guys, tell me in the comments down below why is HRV so bad at Feudal, 
because it has everything to be good. Mind work, uh, Arkhan Chapel that boosts everybody. Or is that Castle H is so good that by delaying it, you're hurting yourself? Maybe it's that. Maybe it's that. But just like HRE just struggles, bro. And it's that. And that. And devs can't really buff it, right? Because it's hard to buff, it's hard to balance. It's one of those seeds, it's hard to balance. If they make something a little bit stronger, they can just go crazy, right? And be super obnoxious, right? So it's really hard, this civilization. I like it. It's just like dog water, especially for our level, bro. Every time I see an HRE player, I, and keep in mind, I lost against HRE, but it's not m m many times, right? And it's like the last time I lost against them, I was playing Zushi for the first time, even before they were nerfed, so, you know, and they were an HRE enjoyer. And every time I see them, I'm like, oh, that's a free dub, which is not most time, many, uh, all the times, but it is many times, right, a free dub, because I know what they're going to do. I know I can, I can apply pressure. And it's just like too predictable. And they don't have good resources to compensate for their predict predictability. Malians. I like this Eve. I don't play this civilization. I, I really, really like them. Many, many streams I say, bro, what about I play Malians today? And I never do. I eventually forget about it, but I, it's one of my favorite civilizations in the game. It has one of the best musics in the game. It has one of the best, best or more interesting in its composition in the game. But it's very, very map dependent. Very, 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 very map dependent right look it can be s tier maldians s tier if they have two golds in the back maldians b tier or a or c tier if they have one gold next to the tc and the other gold is like to the side like over there like not here over there just like little difference right but in general very good cool civilization stupid economy with the cow boom and the gold and the passive gold, right? And I don't understand why they say they have weak units. I know you don't have um, crossbows. You don't have knights. But you have the one of the best spears in the game with the Donzo. You can have one of the best archers in the game with poison arrows. You have the best counter to ranged units with the javelin throwers. Which makes it very hard to play into feudal. Right? It's very hard for Malians to play into Feudal. The only way to beat Malians in Feudal is to have more, like, and way more units than them. Right? Donzos can throw Javelins, Javelin throwers counter ranged units. You can go for Musafadi Warriors to counter armored units. I forgot about them. But in great numbers, they're actually pretty good. It's like a super solid sieve, super fun. I love to cast Malian games. They have It's a very fun sieve to watch. I'm sure it's a very fun sieve to play when you have gold, good gold spawns, when you don't, it must be a pain in the butt to deal with. And um, my only issue with them is their mono landmark problem. They, in Feudal Age, it's always um, the, um, the quarry, the Meso quarry. And in Castle, is like 99% of the times the cow boom landmark, the Grand Flinic Coral. But I love that civilization, it's very solid. Not a lot of people use it at Platinum 2-3 and Diamond 1-2-3. But when they do, when they are a Malin Enjoyer, I respect, bro. I know it's going to be a tough one. When I see a Malin Enjoyer, like, when I go to there, if I go to that AOE for World, and I just see Malin, 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 I mean, like, oh, we're about to go in. We, you know, it's going to be some interesting gameplay over here. They're going to be doing this, doing that. It's very good civilization. I love it. A tier, very solid, good units, good eco. Hard, you, you can kill 10 villagers, who cares? They have 20 cows, 3 pit mines, you know what I'm saying? Pretty good. Next, Jean Dark. 8 tier. I, th I think Malians are better than Zushi though. I think Zushi are a bit more solid, but I think Malians are better than Zushi. Jean Dark, I think it's perhaps the worst of 8 tier, right? Especially because of the nerfs on JD. Also, because they are too JD centric, too hero centric, right? But it really gives French what they need. Something else. Some bonuses. Cheaper knights, cheaper villagers if you want, healing on those knights. Another 
form of healing on those knights, by the way. A way to kill spears or a way to kill crossbows really quick on the Jarn's champions, right? Uh, what else? Jarn in itself, uh, it's a very good unit. And, and those little things just make a better French. Even though you don't have faster villager production, even though you don't have cheaper eco buildings, it really shows that that is not the thing that French need to be good, right? GD is a very good civilization. Sometimes they can be B tier, right? Sometimes they can be here because people are too passive with them. Some games I just won against JD because they were just passive, right? They, they just didn't do enough. And they, sometimes they are ahead. They just don't do enough to use that advantage. I don't know. Maybe I should put JD at the best of in B tier. Like B plus. No, no. I think they are like A. They, they very... Yeah, it's a very good sieve. It's a very good sieve. No doubt. It's worse than all of these sieves for sure. But it's better than Ayubid and China for sure. Yeah, 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 as well. But yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Not much to talk about it. A lot of good, good a lot. You can make a lot of knights with um, consecrated stables. You can make them faster. Chivalry, Guild Hall is a great landmark. Royal Institute is a great landmark to finish the game in Castle. You can get even cheaper um, units with boosted consecrate on Castle. You know. You can get free siege with the cannons in late game. Um, just a great sieve, bro. Just a great sieve in general. Solid. Kind of hurt with the John nerves, but really, really good. Next, controversial. Byzantines. The best on the B tier so far. Byzantines, great sieve. Bro, great sieve. It really is. And stop typing right now. It's not. They're not dog water. You dog water. <laughs> no. It's, it's, it kind of is, it kind of is. Okay, let, let me explain. Hold on, don't leave the video. Let me explain. Byzantines, you have to do a lot of setup. You have to make a lot of choices. You have to scout really well and adapt very quickly, okay? They have all the tools to be good, bro. They have all the tools to be good. Better eco. Uh, good units. Good unique units. Good unique stuff in the oil and whatever. Their villagers can... Bro, the villagers fighting is actually good, right? It's not like, oh shit, it's S tier, but it's good, right? And if you, if you think about it, what it's bad about Byzantines, they, they don't have like anything that is really bad. It's like they're just really, really hard to use. But when you do it, they're so good, bro. But you need to be aware of so many things and actually using those things. Right? There is, like, for example, China, they have Imperial Officials. You can micro them, but you they can just, they do that thing. You put them there, supervising, they're supervising. You make them collect gold, they're collecting gold. You don't really, like, it's already being used by itself, right? Kinda. But Byzantines is like, if you have one, only one or two systems, you have to change the, the bonus. You have to place your buildings very smartly. You have to be very aware when, where, and with what units your enemy is attacking. You have to understand timings, because you can be booming your eco and you have to be making units. Or you are making units and you should be booming your eco. Or you're making farms and you should be going out in the map to get uh, deer, boar, or berries. You have to make the choice for what unit in feudal, castle, and imperial you'll want from the contract. You see, it's so many choices, and not only that, it's not they are not momentarily choices. Like the, the contract, it's a choice for the future. And sometimes, if you, if you don't have a lot of experience, if you don't real, read the game well, you can't make that future choice in Feudal. Right? Should I go for a second TC? Should I make farms now, farms later? Should I go for this composition? Should I go for this siege? How, how many buildings do I need because they produce faster? When I should make a blacksmith? All of, all of those things are important. But I think it's a very good sieve. Very fun sieve to play with. A very good sieve to play against. They're not crazy. Uh, um, they're not oppressive. They're not obnoxious to play with. 
if you see somebody on Diamond 2 that plays a lot of Byzantines, you know you gotta give them respect. They're great Sif, and they cannot be buffed, right? If Byzantines in Platinum and Diamond are 50% win rate, they're gonna be crazy on higher ranks. If Platinum and Diamond players are good with Byzantines, pro players will win every single game where they are Byzantines and others are not. Because they are good, they have all these mechanics. It, it just really depends on the player. So Byzantines are not dog water, you are dog water. It is, guys. It's my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Oh, I forgot about Order of the Dragon. Order of the Dragon, I think, second best B tier civilization. Really good. Maybe not, mm, I don't know, maybe worse than um, a Ubids over there. It's just like, when you need to switch, it's really hard to switch your composition because it make they, they are made slower. But if you are able to save units, maintain a certain number, it's so good. And then, I think they really benefit first from their buffs, but they really benefit from this meta of Siege, or Siege being a bit more important, because that's a great way to take care of them, is with Siege, especially when they go mass archers or mass crossbows, it's really hard to counter that without the Manganel, and their Siege is not made slower, right? So, th th there is a way, the Siege is a way to compensate their slow time of production because the cost of the units is not really important or it's not really a downside because their villagers compensate for that right their villagers gather faster and their units are more expensive but what the villagers don't compensate for is the time how much time does it take to make a unit i think that's my biggest problem with this civilization it's how slow you make units because this game it's about fighting this game is about trading units trading armies and when one Civilization takes more time to make their units, it's inherently gonna be worse, even though your units are better, right? But I think it's a great sieve, super fun to play. Every unit is good, you can make every type of composition with them, your economy can go crazy, you have great landmarks, even mine work is useful, Elbak is useful, especially if the game goes long and you already have a lot of military, so you don't have space for a lot of villagers, so Swabia will be kind of useless. So I think it's a great sieve, very, very, very good, very solid, just hard to adapt. Even though, even, though, even though you might scout your enemy, and you know you need to make that switch, very hard to do, enemy can catch you off guard really easily, great civilization though. Then, my favorite civilization in the game, the Japanese, which I have to make here on B tier, because they are not, like, up there. But, they, no, they're way better than a Ubid. And I think they're also better than Byzantines because they are easier to use. And, as Byz not as much, but like Byzantines, you have a lot of choices and a lot of ways to play them. But it's easier, you don't need to make so much buildings and make so much choices, right? Making the switches are really easy. I think they are a great civilization. I win a ton with them. It's my most played civilization by far. And you can play so many different ways with them. They're great on the water maps, right? They're good on the land maps. You can go second TC, fast castle, uh, one TC aggression, um, bugesha, <laughs> on a bugesha aggression into fast castle, samurai spam in feudal, um, Upgrade your TC on Feudal, make a Horseman with a Uma Bannerman, a Ras, go Castle. Bro, you can do so many things with the Japanese, and it's so fun. They have great units, even though their ranged units kind of suck, and you can be kited, kited forever by ranged units. I think they're the best beat you receive by far. By far, they're great. They have a lot of good eco bonuses, but you need to build a lot. Right, you need to invest 2000 and 100 stone to get their maximum farm power. But if you do, it's just out of this world. I think nobody can have more food than you if you have all those farms going. Right, um, you, the Yori Shiros, bro, Yori Shiros are crazy damn good. I oh, want faster military production, got it. You want a fake relic, that's why I call them. 75 gold per minute, got it. I want faster um, TC production, got it. You want faster siege production, got Bro, 
Most games, I make sure I save one Yorishiro for the Siege Workshop. It's god, it's damn good. It's that good. It's really good, right? And I think Japanese, they really just lack perhaps faster tech ups or faster or cheaper eco upgrades. The, the eco upgrades are great. And when I say cheaper eco upgrades, is that farming upgrade? I think it's very expensive, but it needs to be. It needs to be that expensive. And it's not just the price; it's the time that you need to spend collecting the stone, right? Um, but a great unit, easy to mass the units, the crossbows, if you have enough of those crossbows, good luck catching those, good luck running with men at arms after them, right? Just great, great sieve, they just lack impact, I think they, they lack impact, I think every sieve on A tier, they have that one thing or a couple things that really can scare or impact the enemy, and Japanese doesn't do that, right? Great sieves, great sieve. I, I love playing Japanese, it's so, so fun to play. Great voice lines, great music. Ozuts, what a crazy. Tanegashima Gunsmith, great. You can have plus three and plus four upgrades, which can change the game. Bugashes are great to chase ranged units. And you can get three different units from the, from the barracks. Usually, you only, you only have Spear, Man at Arm, right? But with Japanese, you get Spear, Man at Arm, and Bugeisha. So you can make uh, only, from only your barracks, you can make this very diverse army that requires different counters from the, from the enemy. And I think that's really valuable, especially on Battle 2, 3, and Diamond 1, 2, and 3 as well. Next, S tier civilization over here, Ottomans. Super, super good. Now, you'll not win every single game with them, but it's way easier to do that with the others. Free units, cheaper uh, production buildings, faster production speed. Bro, low-key, the Twin Manarit Madrasa, the Feudal Age landmark, it's one of the reasons why they're so good. Bro, that landmark is so freaking good. Especially if you get the food upgrade and wheelbarrow. Those villagers be collecting food. I don't know what... They, they were snorting some things. They were working extra time today. You know what I'm saying? They got them good on that landmark. It's such a great um, uh, civilization. Sipa one of the best horsemen in the game on the Sipahi. Method is crazy good. Janissaries are crazy good. They can have the perfect quote-unquote range composition. Archer skill spears. Crossbow skill men at arms. Janissaries skill cavalry. So there is nothing else but the manganel. That can, or other archers, or more archers, that can kill them. But you have a free manganel, and you can have a cheaper siege workshop, and a faster production on those spring notes to kill the enemy manganel. You can have free knights, you can have basically a free high-value units in Castle Legend Imperial. Free knights, free men at arms, free crossbows, free janissaries. You can spam to imams that heal everybody. Bro, some people on my stream say, bro, why you go for the imams? They're so useless, and I win the game because of them. Because I'm pushing, I want to finish the game in Feudal or Early Castle. They, they just heal everybody. So you can just keep pushing under the TC. It's just great, right? Um, even today, I just won a game. I went Castle. at five or six barracks. Bro, man at times flooding the field. It doesn't fucking stop. So, so good. But they have to nerf the 100% building production boost on Imperial. It's just ridiculous. Guys. Since that was changed, I was I remember I was reading the patch notes for, for that buff months ago. And I was like, this is stupid, this cannot exist. And then you have fast imperial great bombard spam BS. It's just awful, but it's awful to play against. But like it happened once in months to me, right? So it doesn't really happen that much. And I think all the sieves that are better than the other sieves as well, not only they are easier to play or are more simpler, which, for example, it's not the case of the Mongols, it's not the case of the Malians, it's not the case of Zushi Legacy, right? But why are they better than the other ones? Because it, you can compensate your mistakes easier or faster. And Ottomans, you can compensate your mistakes or punish the enemy harder because free units faster production, and cheaper military buildings. Oh, you just lost a battle? Or you need to make this switch on your army? Just make 8 barracks. They're cheaper. Right? 
and then you can make, you can make units faster, right? It's goddamn good, right? Best team in the game so far right now. It's not super crazy. You can beat them, but it's going to be a long fight. Yes. Or you need to kill 30 villagers because you can kill villagers and they still crush you because they get units pumping, right? Great sieve, really good, free siege, faster production on all units, between Marinette Madresse, um, and that's all. Then, uh, Delhi. Delhi, Delhi, Delhi. Delhi is either S or A. Like, after Rus. I think, yeah, I think that's a good place for Delhi. Because I have, I have my, the worst win rate against Delhi. I lose, not every single time, but out of 10 games, I lose 8 against Delhi. That's not ridiculous. I might be exaggerating, but if, if it's not 8, it's 7 or 6. I lose a lot against Delhi because of their feudalage. And I was casting the Energy Slapfest. Shout out to them. Great tournament, by the way. And every game that I casted from Delhi, they won. Right? So, why are Delhi not higher on the list here? Because they have the best Feudal Age. They can spam Ghazi Raiders, which are expensive, but they can spam them, and then a bunch of archers that shoot faster. So, you want to make spears to counter the Ghazi Raiders? No, because the archers will attack faster. And then you can't make horsemen, because their Ghazi Raiders are better than your horsemen. And you can't make archers because their archers are better or attack faster than your archers. Then they have free upgrades, so they don't need to invest in upgrades. They just invest into units or buildings. And then they get secret sites and they get free gold. They're just so good, so, so solid. But why are they not S tier on this tier list for Platinum Diamond? Because most people don't really play Feudal, right? At my level. So... The Delhi players do, but sometimes when I win, it's because they didn't knew when to make more units or stop making units and then go castle. Or they didn't knew when to... Um, or, they, or they just fast castle and they don't use the best part of their sieve, which is to be strong in feudal, right? Or they're not good at controlling the sacred sites, right? That's why I think Delhi is not S tier for Platinum Diamond. For diamonds two and three, sure, sure S tier. It's really hard to beat those players, but for for plat two, plat three, diamond one, I still see them not really using Delhi to their full power. But it's a goddamn good sieve, and I lose to them all the time. Now, special case for last English, English is A tier, perhaps the worst A tier, but they might have more wins. Or people might be more annoyed at playing against them. Because they are the simplest sieve in the game. The easiest sieve in the game. And now, at Conqueror and Conqueror 4, they are top 2 on the win rates ladder. Right? So even the, at pro level, they're showing up their strength. And I've been saying this for too long. They have too much cheap stuff. Too much discounts. The better archer unit in the game. Faster production on the man at arms. Man at arms in the feudal age. Cheaper farms, better farms, cheaper meals, the too many defensive upgrades, they, they, their units can shoot faster, they can make the best archer unit in the game faster, they can have more, uni they can have more units than you and go castle or imperial, they can have two landmarks that produce 100% faster, it's just like too many cheap things and you don't need to, ne to leave your base, you don't need to go on the deer, you don't need to go, some people don't even care about the relics, as playing English and the they are the easiest sieve to compensate your mistakes, and they are the easiest sieve to punish the opponent's mistakes, because sometimes, most times, you lose a battle with English, and the flow of units don't stop, because their units are cheap, they, made, they are made really fast, and uh, the men at arms, especially with the upgrade, are, they, they, they take a lot of time to kill. So, you might have a slight advantage, but you are killing many times in this place and then more units are arriving and arriving because it takes so much time to kill. More units are arriving and arriving and arriving. And then you it snowballs. Or 
sometimes they don't, they don't need siege. They just have this crazy good eco because cheaper and better farms. And then they just throw many times around your army and kill the siege that is coming in. Or they kill some of your units with the longbows and they find a way through your army to kill the siege. Right? I think it's just like they're too easy, they're too simple, by far the sieve with most one trick ponies, by far the sieve in every rank with most games. And I think they are too powerful for how simple and easy they are. And then what happens is too many players get comfortable and stuck in English. Bro, it happened a lot. New sieves came out, variant sieves came out, no English players. The usual English enjoyer that only plays English since the game came out, right? Then, a couple months, a couple weeks, maybe a month or two, um, suddenly, boom! Uh, not as much, but a way more English player on the ladder. Why? Because they try the new sieves, they try the variant sieves, but they too hard. Which is not true. Nobody told you to get fixated on the easiest. Like, I don't play English. I despise English. Right? Despise, quote-unquote. Right? So, people got too comfortable and too stuck in this easy, super rewarding, hard-to-punish civilization. And they try something else. They lose a couple games. Oh, why am I here playing Byzantines? Why am I here playing China? Why am I here playing even Rus or Japan or Ottomans and losing or winning but having a hard time if I can just go, never leave my base, have the best archer unit in the game, being produced faster, right? With the best and cheapest farm in the game, because, for example, Japanese, they have better farms. But first, they have to invest 2,000 and 100 stone, and it's only around the town center. English, cheaper meals, cheaper farms, and what do they do? To upgrade their farms? That's true. Nothing. Nothing. They just age up. Right? So you can see it's too many cheap stuff and too many rewards for a very simple gameplay. And then at Plat and Diamond, that just makes it so easy for them. But you have players that are Diamond 1, Diamond 2 only playing English and they are not better than other players that are Plat 3 or Diamond 1 as well. They are not. But they play this super easy, hard to punish, and the super safe civilization, right? Which really helps them. And then it's the main reason how I don't like it is because it's a crutch. And it makes bro, it's one of the worst experiences to play against English. Even when I win, I don't like to play against English. It's very obnoxious, right? Because they have this crazy strong eco and this crazy um strong units that attack faster when you want to finish the game, right? Or just they pull five villagers to attack you. I, even though I, I know how to deal with that, it's just annoying as well to play with them. And when I was go bro, when I was gold and low platinum, every single day I would play five, like I played ten games, five were English, bro. It was so obnoxious, so so obnoxious. I, I think I have some trauma in the back of my head, right? Because for example, French knights, great unit, but to kill a villager, you have to risk the knight. You have to go under TC, you have to go into the wood line. But with longbows, you don't need to risk the longbows. You can shoot, even though they don't outrange the town center, when you have five or six longbows, you can just snipe the villager and come out so quick that only one longbow takes the shots from the TC, and sometimes it's not enough to kill them. And if it is, who cares? They're super cheap in comparison to other units, I know they are more expensive than archers, and then you just make them faster, right? And because an English has such a strong eco and is cheap using using units like spear and longbow, their most common uh, combo on, uh, on feudal, you kill a villager or two, it's great value, because now you have these better farms, these better units, and then it just really snowballs, right? So I think English shouldn't be nerfed, they, their units shouldn't be nerfed, but something should change where they, they, they have to go into the map. Because they, ne they never go for deer. Sometimes they don't even go for relics or sacred sites. They just, they don't need to. And that's the point. They don't need to. They don't need to invest into this or into that. They just exist. And they are better than certain sieves just because they exist. And that's not valuable. Why, do, why China needs to make imperial officials and micro them? Why Byzantines need to make, needs to make... Um, 
cisterns and connect the cisterns and build the mercenary house and choose the contract to then be worse in some cases than English. It doesn't make sense, right? And that's my main issue with English. It's how cheap and easy it is. And it shouldn't be so strong by how cheap and easy it is. But it's a great sieve. And it's like gold is S tier, low platinum S tier. It can You can go to diamond just playing English. And you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Like... You, it's normal if you go to Diamond World just playing Rus or Ottomans because they're strong, they have a certain level of difficulty, you, you need to risk this, you need to risk that, but you shouldn't be able to just go to Diamond just playing English. Too easy, too safe, but that's also their downfall. They're very predictable. Bro, I've won certain games against English because I just make these mass archers and they bring spears, they don't, they don't even scout me. They don't, they, they, I have no stable, and they bring spears and longbows, and then they just get deleted. At Diamond, this happened at Diamond, Plat 3, Plat 2, because, and I call them the English brain, they're so used to win in that simple, straightforward way, they don't even think outside of the box, right? And guys, it's gonna be everything for today, leave a like, and a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, watch me live on Twitch, thank you very much for watching, and I see you on the next time, as the Cloud Surfer, surfing out!